We can pull those up a little bit. I'm Robert Evans, Sony Artisan of Imagery. I've been photographing weddings for 28 years. It's been my passion, and I'm gonna teach you sort of my philosophy on how I approach a wedding. Okay, so Hopefully, watching this, you're gonna learn how to create more time and space at your weddings by educating your couples to photograph what you want and images that excite you. When you first meet people for the first time, you make a subconscious decision in your mind whether you like or don't like this person. So really your first impression is super important. So I really try to keep my clients at ease and make them feel comfortable. I find it far better to start asking them questions and having them tell me about themselves. So I start learning about them. And a lot of times I've found that from some of the best proposal stories come the best weddings. One of the next things I ask them, is their photography likes and dislikes? Have you guys discussed what you're looking for, what you like, what you don't like? What do you like about my work? Why did you want to come in here today? From that point on, once I have filled with all that information, it's my time to talk a little bit. And that's when I'll start asking them whether they want to see each other or not before, because this is my preferred method of doing it. More and more today, I think more people are willing to see each other. But if I do get, I absolutely don't want to see him ahead of time. I ask them, can I show you both sides? And then you can make the decision and I'll do whatever you want. You're sort of setting yourself up and saying, I'm the one that you're coming to and I want to do it this way and these are the reasons why. You have to be convincing, but you also have to be soft and polite about it. It's a finesse that you have to walk this line and you know start to get them to see your side of it. You have to put yourself in their shoes and understand why don't you want to see each other and her answer could be, ever since I was a little girl, I dreamed of seeing my fiance's face as I walked down the aisle. I can't just shatter her dreams and say, no, this is the way you should do it because I'm probably not going to get the job. But then I ask this question and really it kind of gets them to their moment of conflict, which is after you kiss and say I do and walk down the aisle, what are you going to want to do? And their answer is go party and be with our friends. And I say, exactly. But if you do not see each other prior to the wedding, then we have about an hour's worth of photographs to accomplish afterwards. And then I bring up things like, if the wedding's running a little bit late, we're gonna cut cocktails to 45 minutes, and now I'm expected to do my job in 45 minutes that I had an hour to do, and you guys are the ones that end up getting cheated. Another good point to sort of convince them based on what your wedding day looks like is what if you don't have light after the ceremony? It could very well be dark once the ceremony's over. So sometimes light is a very convincing factor to get your way. Now that I've shown them both sides, the next thing you do is you need to educate your clients on the things that are going to happen to them and what could make them late on the wedding day. Hair and makeup people usually are the biggest culprits of making my brides late. One of the things that I tell them is, you lie to your hair and makeup people one entire hour. And so I tell her, if they happen to be done at two o'clock when I arrive, great. Sit around with your girls, drink champagne, enjoy yourself. The wedding day shouldn't be one stressful moment after another. It should be a fun, relaxing day. I always tell the bride to be responsible for her own dress. I've had a mom or somebody that's wanted to be responsible for the dress and I've had a bride ready to get into her dress but no dress because mom's at the salon and having her hair done and she's not there. Another thing to consider is transportation. Just make sure they've allowed ample time for limousines or classic cars and of course traffic. Making sure that you build in those times traveling back and forth to get to your destinations. One of the next things I ask them is the engagement shoot. Engagement portrait is another great opportunity to build that rapport between you and your client. I like to do it at least 90 days or more prior to the wedding because the further away you do it, the less likely the couple is to say, oh, I'll just wait to see those with my wedding pictures. I usually ask my couples, take me to some place that's important to you because then the challenge now is on me to take whatever this location is and make it look great. The engagement shoot is just a good time to try new things. Challenge yourself to do something different. Shoot what you think your clients want, but then shoot what you want too. 
Now you're sort of at that moment of like, do I get this wedding, do I not? I found in most cases, a lot of my clients want a little bit of time to think about it, but you want to create a little sense of urgency, but slightly, so I usually say, right now the date's open. If I get another wedding inquiry, I will let you know. But I ask, how long do you think you know before you make a decision? So that's kind of how I leave it. Like, I am confident in myself, in my work, and what I do, but there's nothing wrong with trying to get the job, or even sometimes asking for it. I've had people walk in and sign on the spot. I've had people wait a month and then book me. So you have to make that call. Um, but sometimes you do have to ask for the sale.